All right, hey everybody, we are back with another new segment here that we're going to be covering, and today we're going to start off, we got two of these lists, okay, from Motor Trend. We got a best small and mid-size pickup to buy in 2024, and we also actually have a next one we're going to cover is the best full-size pickups to buy 2024. So uh, two lists, this one from May 13th. This one from May 16th, so they're, uh, you know, basically, a f uh, you know, a few days old. So we're going to dive into these and see what their list is. Um, again, I don't put much stock into these, but they are fun to read. And it's interesting to see Motor Trend, their little pros and cons on here are kind of funny to watch. So we're going to dive in. Let's see what we got here. So we have right off the bat, uh, number nine, as in with it, as in worst, okay? Small and midsize. We're in best small and midsize. They're calling the Frontier the worst, with a score of 7.1. Now, I don't think they're taking into account reliability and all that kind of stuff that much. And we know that the F uh, Frontier is one of the most reliable trucks made today. I think they're looking at it as bells, whistles, texts, and all that new crap in them. But anyway, here it is at Frontier. They are saying number nine, the worst of the ones out there. It says it's got rugged styling, throwback hard body variant, confident towing, cons, mostly poor driving experience. I, I don't get it. Uh, lack of standard driver assist features. So what? Um, unimpressive fuel and economy. Uh, either way. Anyway, that's what they rate as number nine. Uh, number eight, of course, the Gladiator. Uh, so 7.5, what are they going to say? Probably rip on it. Uh, uh, unrefined ride. It's it's a Gladiator. It, it's a Gladiator. It, it's not a Cadillac. It's a Gladiator. Um, concerning tow towing behavior in the past. Tows like a champ. Uh, cabin can get loud. This is what we're dealing with here, folks. This 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 is the reality of this list. So let's just keep uh, right on going. They did call it the off-road king. I called it that too, actually, and then a lot of people yelled at me, said it's not. Um anyway, so moving on from there, the uh number seven, number seven on the list is a Tacoma. Okay, they're calling that uh there, they're saying uh uh, finally, a new design, off-road capable models, available in a manual transmission. Uh, where's the electric Tacoma? That's a con, really. Small back seat, we know that. Base SR only gets 228 horsepower. Anyway, moving on from there, Ridgeline is number six on our list. Uh, truck capability, crossover driving manners uh, is the pros. Clever tailgate and bed features made in the USA. There you go, great things. Uh, what's the cons? Uh, single powertrain camp bed configuration, but it's a very good one. Okay, uh, ride quality diminished when hauling is anything. Any trucks ride quality not diminished when hauling, but interesting. Still too crossoverish for some. All right. Anyway, moving on from there. Uh, number five coming in is a Canyon. Uh, right here, good ride, body control, uh, boxy styling, and tough stance. It is a sexy truck. There's no doubt about it. Uh, intuitive modern infotainment, single cab bed configuration, tight interior. I don't think the interior is tight on it. It's one of the best in the industry as far as I'm concerned, at least that I've been in compared to the Tacoma, um, the Ranger, and the Colorado, and the Gladiator, and the Frontier. So I guess I've been in them all now. Um, so, except for the Ridgeline, I have not been. Some low-quality plastics. It, same exact thing you're going to deal with. You think the Canyon's got low-quality plastics? Did they not get into the, t the uh, Tacoma? Did they not maybe ever sit in a Tacoma? Anyway, moving on from there. Uh, number next one on the list, number four, is uh, Colorado. They're ranking a Colorado there, too. What are their pros and cons? Burly exterior design, tacky upscale interior, capable off-road variants, short bed only, no power passenger seat on any trim, okay? Uh, less payload in towing than a full-size truck. Really? Really? These are the cons we're coming up with. I, th that was brilliant thinking, okay? One of the cons is it's got less payload in towing than a full-size truck. Uh, all right, so next one on here. Oh, the Santa Cruz apparently beats all those other trucks we've been seeing on here so far. Uh, striking design, great road manners, more utility, more utility than comparable crossover. Uh, cons. Why not buy a Maverick? Uh, tiny four-foot bed. Expensive with a four turbo. Turbo four. Okay, moving on from there. Ford Ranger. 8.6 motor trend score. Mm, and uh, see what we got on here. Uh, pros. Actually, a mostly new truck. Okay. Strong base i4. Newly available V6, which should be coming out pretty soon. It's going to be a late delivery 2024, but we know the 2.7 is coming into the Ranger. Uh, hybrid and electric models likely underway. 2025, 2026 is when we're expected to see the hybrid hit. Um, and uh, cons. Max payload lower than before. F-150 more capable. I mean, come on. That's a con for this truck? 
It's like, I don't understand it. I don't understand. It's like saying, well, I love my little Mazda Miata, but my Porsche 911 is so much faster. I don't get it. Anyway, um, Maverick, uh, more fuel efficient. So I guess if this one we're seeing here is uh, number two, then what that makes number one? The Ford Maverick. Here we go. We They're calling the Ford Maverick the number one pick. Efficient hybrid powertrain, outstanding value, uh, off-road tremor variant. Um, cons. Lower towing and payload than the Honda Santa Cruz. Single bed and cab configuration. Short seat cushions. Okay, but it is a fantastic truck. So anyway, this is their list. Here it is right here for you. You can read it. This is this is their list right here, ranked in order according to Motor Trend and how they rank the mid-sized trucks. Let's move on mid size and small trucks. Let's roll over here to see what they say about the full size. I have not looked at this article. I have no idea what is in here. I pulled it up. I found it on my phone, pulled it up. We're going to go through it together. Okay, let's see what they got. Uh, despite a numerous demand, only six brands vie for the entire market, and two of those are from the same company. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we got here. Nissan Titan. Again, they call it number six. They're ranking it as worse, but I'll tell you what. I would buy a Nissan Titan today over any other full-size truck right now. Okay, second would be a Ram, but I would buy a Nissan Titan right now with its uh, naturally aspirated V8 engine all day long right now. Um, but they're ranking at number six. Here's the interior. You can see uh, that what are their pros? Strong V8, uh, slick nine speed auto, strong driver assistance suite, cons, low towing and payload capabilities, poor driving dynamics, low quality interior. Well, there you go. Okay, anyway, uh, there's the specs on them. The next one on, number five. So it looks like we only have six of them ranked here. Number five is the, t the Tundra. Okay, what do they got on here? Here's your info. Available hybrid design is a pro. Offers a modern infotainment. Nicely weighted steering. Okay, and the cons. Busy ride. The heck is a busy ride? Anyway, a uh, horrible turning radius. We know that. Okay, it's called a turning radius, not a turning circle, but it is... Uh, um, we know that already. Uh, struggles with heavier tra or with heavy trailers. Okay. Um, what do we got next? A Ram comes in at number four. Uh, what are they saying on this one here? Uh, lineup of strong powertrains. Lots of clever storage. Multitude of optional content. Uh, poor fuel economy. Limited driver assistance tech on the base truck. <laughs> Thank God Ram still offers a base truck without the tech in there where you can get that. Uh, final year of the TRX for for now. Okay, that well, that's a con, huh? That the the TRX is gone for now. Anyway, um, moving on from there, number three, the GMC Sierra 1500. Where do we got here? Um, many style and configurations for potential engine choices. Available hands-free driving tech. Uh, jittery ride when unladen. Okay. Um, and uh, better to get the Sierra EV is a question. That's Again, some, some of these things that we're seeing on here, these little chart things are the most ridiculous I've ever seen somebody come up with for any truck. Uh, number two, uh, Chevy Silverado. Where are we going there? Uh, impressive powertrain options. Beastly ZR2 off-road model. Great truck. Uh, available big screen tech. Uh, gar garish styling. Uh, basic model stuck with old interior, some clumsy driving traits. All right, moving on. We're wasting way too much time here. Uh, F-150 comes in at number one on there's gas, hybrid, and EV powertrains, thoughtful high-tech interior, uh, ludicrous Raptor R, um, cons, minor cosmetic updates at best, hybrid touchy brake pedal, Raptor R's abysmal fuel economy. These were by far the worst list of pros and cons I've ever seen any of these lists ever make in my entire life. Okay, so we got that all sorted out, and we got it sorted. Here it is right there. You can see the specs. If you want them, here is your chart, according to whoever wrote this article for Motor Trend. Um, moving on from there, this one is pretty interesting. Okay, not that we care about the dark horse. Okay, I don't do much cars on this channel. It's all about trucks. But what we learn here and what we see... 2024 Mustang Dark Horse fails fails to sell for 65,500. Owner was hoping for 72. Now this is a $80,000 car. Okay, it's only got 74 miles on it, and it's a 2024. And he took it to auction, hoping to at least get 72.5. The best he got was 65.5. Was the offer they got um, right in here? You see, MSRP on this thing was eighty thousand dollars. He was hoping to at least get 72.5, and it was maxed out at 65.5. Again, the the takeaway here 
It doesn't matter what the vehicle is, whether it's a Land Cruiser, a Tacoma, a brand new 4Runner that's coming out, a Dark Horse, a TRX, a new Raptor R, none of it matters. Markups are gone. Hear me, markups are gone. Never pay them. More proof to it right here. These dealers cannot get it. These guys trying to and trying to squeeze that last one more car in before this blows up in her face. It's over. Never pay a markup again. All right, so now the one we actually, uh, the one I'm using as the headline for this that I thought was pretty interesting. This is from today. Okay, this is today. Uh, it just came up, you know, this morning. But Ford is benchmarking a 2024 Tacoma. So what are they doing that for? For the Why? They already have the Ranger out. We don't know, but for some reason, Ford chose to go out recently and just buy a brand new 2024 Tacoma, and they are going to do what we call benchmarking it. They are going to rip it apart. They are going to study it. They're going to reverse engineer how things went together there, what it did, how it did. Um, Toyota has done this with Ford. These companies do it off of each other all the time, but it's very interesting that Ford, with their brand new 2024 Ranger out, chose to buy a 2024 uh, Tacoma to actually benchmark. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. Um, this also comes, uh, or this news comes around a year since Ford Authority spotted Toyota buying and benchmarking the last generation Fours, or Ford Ranger. Though in recent months, a blue oval midsizer has defeated the 2024 Tacoma and Colorado and very comp various competition tests. Either way, um, that stuff, but I do find it interesting uh, that Ford did buy this Tacoma and why and what they're looking at it for. Something tells me it's for the uh, the uh, hybrid power plant. See, we got a feeling that next year they're going to bring this Ranger out with a hybrid in it. We have a feeling that they're going to they bought this so that they could study that hybrid system that is in the 2024 Tacoma. Notice they didn't buy one that was a, uh, you know, that came out six months ago with just the, uh, you know, the, the turbo four-cylinder. They waited until now they can get their hands on the actual uh, iForce Max uh, version that's got the uh, hybrid in it. That is the key. That is what Ford wants to dive into. See right here, Ranger is also, right here, Ranger is also set to gain a plug-in hybrid power plant that combines the existing 2.3i4 gas engine with electric motor and battery to offer customers 28 miles of electric-only driving range and um, a 7716 max tow capacity. For now, the Ranger plug-in hybrid isn't slated to come to the U.S., but rumors have it indicated that it could as soon as next year. In fact, we'll have more on this soon. Be sure to subscribe. We know it's coming, okay? It's already gets a guarantee it's coming here. It needs to be here more than it needs to be anywhere else with the stupid government regulations and EPA stuff. So it has to come here, but that's what it's interesting to note. Ford is planning to, they're dissecting what Toyota has done with the hybrid system in the Tacoma, Ford's going to dissect that and use it to whatever benefit they can in the next plug-in hybrid version of a Ranger that comes out. So uh, there we go. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll be back with more stuff for you soon. And as always, thank you for watching.